Hey everybody, it's me, Jason. Welcome to the third video I have for Gaslands. And I'm going to cover a few subjects, and I don't normally get in front of the camera, but I am for this one, because the subject came up on the Gaslands Facebook page that I really want to address. Uh, but first and foremost, a new fact just came out. Um, Mike Hutchinson posted it roughly about six or seven hours ago, uh, from the time of this filming. Um, the new fact basically clears up quite a few things. Most importantly is the template size. Um, I'm not sure how that's going to affect people who are making templates for sale, for retail purposes, the acrylic templates and whatnot. Um, it's not much of a difference. It is though, depending on how you cut it. Um, basically that millimeter border that was around it, that's actually part of the template itself. So that needs to get kind of clarified don't know how again how manufacturers are going to take care of that um also what was clarified that i do want to touch on excuse me was the issue about the size of the gates um in the book i believe on page 41 it says that they are like 15 centimeters in a diagram and then later on in the book it said it was 18 centimeters so technically both were correct and I had posted this question on the Facebook page and somebody actually asked me if I was trolling the page. I assured them I was not because this was something that was legitimately a question amongst myself and other players. Uh, but again, thanks to the new fact updated by Mr. Hutchinson, uh, the gate is one long straight in width or 18 centimeters. So that's the new one. Check out the new fact. Um, everything that's new is in blue on the paper. Um, that should help clarify quite a few things. He also clarified about using wrecking balls as an exploding ram. That it basically can't be done. Um, I don't see why it couldn't. I'm going to actually include that in World of the Mad, my Gaslands plugin, an alternate setting. Uh, the basic idea is if you use it, you will lose one handling dice and gain one token because I mean it's a giant wrecking ball going from side to side on a car. Um, if you're using a war rig, I think you know that penalty will be declined. If you're using a bus, same thing because of the sheer mass and size of the buses. It this is sci-fi gaming. Come on, we we can get it. But I love that idea. I didn't actually think of using a wrecking ball as an exploding ram. That was a great idea. Um, so yeah, it'll be in my little alternate version. Um, so here's the big thing that I want to talk about. A gentleman, Thomas Bielich, posted up that he has seen people getting, just to be blunt, being shit on for not modding out their cars for gas lands. That disturbs me. Okay, the reason why that disturbs me and I had just put out a video about four or five days ago called Finding Your Ride for Gaslands, where I addressed the same thing. I had people coming to me via either Facebook, private messages, or on <clears throat> through Facebook community, you know, just asking, you know, hey, I can't paint, um, or I don't think I'm good at painting. I want to get something right off the bat that gives me good rust effects. And I addressed all that in the video, okay? Um, I touched on it. I didn't give an expansive list of all these other cards, but I gave you some great examples. Um, at least I think they were great examples, and about 200 other people think the same thing because they like the video. So let me address that fact. First and foremost, no war game, to my knowledge, absolutely positively says in their rulebook that your model needs to be painted. It doesn't say your model needs to be primed. Show me where it says that in any rule book. I'll eat my words. But let's take 40K for example. Okay? In Warhammer 40K, you can come to the table with your interceptor, painted, nice, pretty, really cool. Most gamers, and I I'm gonna say gamers, do ask that you have at least three colors on it. I think it's a fair enough rule for you to ask your fellow gamers to at least have three colors on it. Um, is it a necessary rule? No. No, it's not. Why? Because what you see is what you get on that model. Okay, you're playing by stats written on a sheet or on your uh, tablet, iPhone, whatever. That's what you're playing on. 
and not paying playing on a painted uh not not playing for painted models okay i go to two different uh local gaming shops around here one is my comic store one is an actual dedicated gaming shop this primaris is acceptable for all the gamers in my community to be played it is primed and you know what we even play games full-fledged games uh competition level games with them either just primed or bare no paint whatsoever why because everything that's on the model needs to be on the model okay again i have yet to see any rule system that says you need to paint your model in order to play a game Gaslands especially show me where it says that in Gaslands that you have to do it don't be a fucking snob and say oh well you can't play because your model straight out the box wrong that is wrong okay that's like me playing X-Wing when I when I played X-Wing I'm playing it straight out the box these models come pre-painted pre-painted models we all know they're pre-painted does anybody say anything? No. Does anybody say anything about repainting them? No. So what's the difference between that and getting your pre-painted model out of your Hot Wheels box right off the shelf when you can buy it for one dollar? All that matters in the game, as I've said before in several videos, the game is not what you see is what you get. It is what is written on that dashboard. What's on the dashboard? That's all that counts. So, you know, if you're one of those people who are being a dick to your fellow players out there saying they can't play because they have not modified their car, they have not repainted their car, you're an asshole. Put your shit up, get out of the damn store. That's not the spirit of gaming. The spirit of gaming is gaming, community, playing together, having fun, having a good time. Now, that's not to say... That if you're running an organized event and the organizers decide, hey, we need to go ahead, we want all the models at least modified in some way. If that's clearly stated in the rules, I can understand that, I can get with that, because that's the organizer's choice. It heightens the game. And no doubt, modding out your cars, excuse me, does heighten the game, heighten the sense of the game. Sorry about that. But yeah, if, for instance, my 11-year-old son has this model. If he came into the store after he builds this model and wants to run a game with us, with me and my fellow players in my local group, nobody would have a problem with that. Not because he's 11 years old. Not because he's a kid. Not because he honestly does not know how to paint to the level that I know how to paint and some of my fellow players know how to paint, but it's because he has brought a vehicle, he wants to play the game, and we're going to let him play the damn game. Same thing with his Master Roshi wagon. He comes in, he wants to play with this model, he's got it assembled, he's good to go. In fact, anybody who comes to our group with any models, Hot Wheels, Matchbox, Jada, whatever, and they're not painted, they're not modified, they don't have any weapons on them, as long as they got that little dashboard, you're good to go. You can play in our games. You are more than welcome to join our game because we are a community, and that's what gaming is about. Community, making friends, and having fun. Okay, so Thomas, thank you for bringing up that subject. It's one that really irks me when people do that to other players. Shouldn't be done should not be done okay like i said in my previous video this game is about one of the cheapest games you can get into why are you turning away players if they haven't repainted their cars i mean seriously you're paying anywhere between 15 and 25 bucks for the book i think that's a fair price that's a fair price range i honestly really do for a game book honestly a fair price for your models for instance you're paying about three to five dollars for one Primaris Marine. Around about. I think that's a fair price. That's fine. And then you have to paint it and do everything else if you're if you want to play to that level. Personally, I, I do, that's why I haven't played my 40k games yet. I haven't painted all my models. X-Wing, same thing, right out of the box. 
boom, you're ready to play. So, literally, depending on the size of the game, 50 point game, 50 cam game, I should say, one or two cars. One, two dollars in the U.S. Outside of the U.S., it's a little more expensive. I do, I know, I understand. But, literally, two bucks, you've got two models to play. You're done. Hey, you got an extra five bucks? You got an extra ten bucks that you can spend? You want to make a really full-fledged team? Walk into your mass retail store. There's a whole team for you. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six dollars gets you six different cars. Seven dollars. Let's say seven dollars with tax. Six different cars. Write down your six different dashboards. You're good to go. Okay. Another thing some of you guys want to talk about when it comes to, oh, you didn't paint your car. Remember the candy cola from Fury Road? Bare metal? That's just stripping down your Hot Wheel. This is the bone shaker. Strip down. Um, I'm going to get to this one in a second. Candy Cola has no paint on it. All it has is the tires that are black, basically. That's it. You want to complain about the interior? The interior is already either black or white, depending on which version of this model you get. Of this, you know. So there, boom, done. Are you guys going to bitch about Candy Colas because they have no paint on them? If somebody uses just to use the bare metal with some clear coat on it, do you consider the clear coat paint? Stop being dicks. Gaming is a community. Make friends. Have fun. Alright? Not too hard to understand. I don't know why this keeps going on and on in the gaming community. Oh, well, I do. Because there's elitist snob assholes. That's why. So anyway, that was a major thing I really wanted to talk about. I know I ranted on. And I, I do get very emotional about it. Because I was one of those gamers way back in the 90s. We came to the table with just bare plastic and got shit on by veteran players. I said, no, you need to have three colors on there. You can't play with us. No, that's bullshit. Total bullshit. If you like it, if you don't like it, voice your opinion. Let me hear what you think about that. I'm sticking with my guns, though. Stop being dicks. Play the damn games. Have fun. So I'm going to pause real quick. So I can go ahead and change this camera and show you what I'm working on. What I've got going on, I've kind of showed you a little bit. And yeah, let's do that. Let's, let's flip the script just for a second here. Okay, everybody, now with that out of the way, let's get into some of the projects I'm doing real quick. And I'm not going to apologize for the rant. It is what it is. Like it or leave it. But let's move on. So first thing I want to talk about is the ZMAC or Zamac uh, Hot Wheels. As you see, they just came out. My wife, you know, love you. Love you, babe. Uh, she pretty much got me the entire set of these. You've got a 68 Olds 442, 71 Dodge Demon, a Plymouth Duster Thruster, a 68 Capo Camaro, 67 Ford Mustang Coupe, and the 68 Pla uh, Plymouth Barracuda Formula S. Um, these are really cool. They are the 97 cent variety of Hot Wheels. I do plan to use these for the basis of my hover conversions that I've been talking about. Um, also available in this series that I did not get and I'm not sure I really want to get is the Chevy Camaro Concept because I have plenty of the new Camaros and several of the older concept cars. Nor did I get the 70 Buick GSX. It just didn't appeal to me once I actually saw it in the store. I might pick up one or two. But otherwise, I got the rest of them. They had these in abundance at one of my local Walmarts. So be on the lookout for them. Really cool. Um, and again, referring to the Candy Cola thing. And my previous statements. Silver. Bare metal look. Would you consider that painted? I think so. Even with these decals. Um, one thing to notice on the 68 Olds. I do love those hubcaps on there. So these are wheels I probably will not replace on the other one I have. And the same thing for... Where is it? Uh, the Mustang Coupe's got those same type of rims in there. Really nice. Maybe do some dry brush work on it. But otherwise I wouldn't uh, change it. And I do like that it has the red line on it. That's one of my favorites. 
And on the Cuda, it's got the typical Hot Wheels rims, but it's got the white wall on it. Again, something I really like. Um, also to note, and I'm going to say right off the bat, I do apologize. I forgot your name. In the big hubbub I just had, I forgot your name. You posted it on the uh, Gaslands page. This is the Tankernator. This was the first release. I believe this was new for 2015 release. The current one is blue with a blue camo scheme. Um, I was honestly going to think about modding out this vehicle because of these tires. Right? It's got treads and tires. I was like, I've never seen a tank like that. You know, it looks kind of funny. However, the gentleman who posted it, and again, I do apologize for forgetting your name. I'm totally blanking out right now. Um, but a gentleman posted up about the Tankinator and somebody replied. There's a real world tank called the Schofield tank that does have treads and two wheels in the same spot. Um, the wheels, you know, of course they're bigger wheels kind of like this. But I was like, holy crap. So I guess I don't have to modify my Tankinator anymore. Maybe just put a button or something just to cover up this hole. Or if I could find a decent 20 millimeter figure. Actually, I might actually have one and possibly drill out this uh, uh, big the big gun. Um, the big question is, and maybe you guys can help me that play Gaslands, what would you ca classify this as? It's a tank, but it's got wheels also. So is it a car with treads? I don't know. Let me know what you think would be interesting to see your builds for it and what you do with these. Um, so yeah, uh, now the bone shaker, like I had showed just a moment ago in my, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> in my rant, the bone shaker is actually, <coughs> sorry guys and gals, I'm having allergy fits, coughing like crazy, had to pause the video, but anyway, so, again, sorry about that. Um, the Bone Shaker, this is going to be for a mod that my friend... <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> wow. Okay. Let's try to get through this. Um, Bone Shaker is for a mod that my friend Larry would like. He has sent me something. I got it right here. I'm going to open it up in just a moment. He sent me something... Um, it is Hot Wheels related. <coughs> wow, I am like super sorry about all these pauses right here. Um, <coughs> just th These allergies are kicking my butt right now for some reason. Probably because we got like 30 mile per hour winds. Anyway, Larry has sent me something. I'm going to open it up here in a second. Um, that's going to be something I hand down to my kids. At least to two of my kids. And he sent me a mod for this. So in appreciation of that, I'm doing this commission for him. It's not going to be the standard bone shaker. Uh, let me open it up right quick because he did send me something to go along with this. It'll just be a second. I literally just got it out of the mail. Right before I started shooting this video. And as always, we gamers, when we send stuff, we make sure it's sealed up. At least most of us do. It is sealed up beyond the necessary means. That just means it's more special. And like I said, the, the stuff he sent me is Hot Wheels related. I know this part might be kind of boring for everybody. Okay, so sent me this book, Hot Wheels Legends 3, the legendary cars behind the classic wheels. It does come with this. I don't know what this is. And holy crap. Um... Wow, really? What is this? 57 Eldorado. Holy shiza. Um, No, it's staying in there. I don't care. It's staying in there. This is for my kids. But I, I've been looking for one of these for a while. Thank you, Larry. And the other one was the Fantasy Cars, book one. What is this car? I don't think I've seen this one quite before. 
Monte Carlo, the Jeepster. Very cool. That is awesome. These are children's books, by the way. Referencing materials, hot wire. Oh, yeah. Hey, I had one of these. Actually, I think I had one from McDonald's. I had this one, too. And that one, and that one, and that one. Wow. Thank you, Larry. I greatly appreciate it. So, let's see. So, this is what he sent me to add to his bone shaker. This was a piece he requested to be added. I'm going to do so. Oh, it's a minigun. Okay. I think I got something else for you, Larry. I'm going to put this on there. I got something else I think you're going to dig. Do not worry. I got, I got some bits I'm going to add on there for you. All right. Uh, otherwise, as far as the hover car conversions go, I'll be doing a separate whip on those. I used this car, the uh, Voltage Spike, as a donor car. Because as you can see right here, I, it's been, I've already cut it away. These side panels, uh, if I could get it to flip over correctly. There we go. Now if it'll just focus, which I doubt it will. Come on. Oh well. Anyway, if you've seen the Vulture Spike, you know what I'm talking about. These little side panels here. Let me see if I get another one. The other one will help it. No, it's not going to focus. Of course, the bane of my existence, my YouTube existence. Anyway, so the driver's seat has these things on there. They look like they'll be really good as little hover parts. There we go. Now you can see it. If I could close in on it. There you go. Anyway, these parts were right here. Cut them off. <clears throat> Excuse me. They'll look pretty good on the side of these other cars that I'm using. Um, like I said, it's a donor car. So this roll cage, I'm sure is going to go on one of my trikes that I have. I really like this front end. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's nice and wide. It'll look cool on something. And this rear end really reminds me of uh, the Back to the Future 2 DeLorean. So I'm going to have to modify that up and put it on one of those cars. That'll probably be the first prototype car. I may do it as a giveaway, um, but if somebody wants to buy it, like I said, just make an offer. Have an idea of what I'd ask for it. You might be surprised. But yeah, so that's that. Hell, I might even put this stuff on the sock monkey car, as I'm calling it. All right, so that's it. Again, I did my rant. Make what you will of it. Comment below your thoughts. Let me know what you think. Quick studio update. Also gave you an update on the fact going on for Gaslands, the official fact. You can find it on the Gaslands on Gaslands.com to download real quick. It's not even a megabyte. It's a really small file. Get it on your phone. And also, World of the Mad is continuing. Like I said, it is World of the Mad on Facebook, Gaslands, or World of the Mad at Gaslands alternate setting. You can find it real quick. Just look. Look my name up. You'll be able to find it. All right, guys. Take it easy. Have a great one. Hope you have fun in the wastelands. Later.